of them and they've denied that they knew what it was but um, some fans have a sneaking suspicion that they did see it. I know for a fact that uh, Oren Pelly who did Paranormal Activity knows of Ghostwatch because there was an article in Time Out magazine in which he was asked to name 10 kind of little known horror films that he uh, that he respected and one of them was Ghostwatch. So given that it was a television program uh, and you know, and he made paranormal activity, I would say that there's definitely a kind of link there, really. But really, I think that the found footage horror, as they call it, I mean, it isn't always found footage, but, you know, you know what I mean by that. Yeah. Um, uh, cinema verite style horror uh, really comes from the invention of camcorders, I think, and the yeah. fact that people could, you know, whereas my generation had Super 8 cameras and that kind of thing, it never, it never really took off the ground until camcorders were so available and so easy to fling around and it became the language of um, of making horror plausible which is what we did in a different context but um, but I think it's I think the real boom in found footage came from uh, you know camcorder technology in a sense yeah I mean Leslie you spoke earlier on about Leslie uh, better direction to make it feel so realistic is even today is such an accomplishment because um, you know, to me, as much as good as the whole cast was, it was actually Craig Charles that that sold it for me because, you know, people say about he's not very good in it. I actually think he's re- he feels really awkward almost at the start. <laughs> he um, knew immediately what he had to. He knew immediately what his role was. Yeah. So I I, I think he said something like, "So I'm the idiot." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the bit where he jumps out of the cupboard and stuff. Now, everyone in the cast really got it. You know. Yeah. Parkinson really understood it. You didn't have to explain to them; they were smart enough to know what we were aiming at, you know, um, and the, and and what their role was in it. I mean, Parkinson, um, you know, wanted to put some things in his own words, and you know, the director and I were hundred percent, hundred and one percent keen on him doing it the way that he felt he should do it. I mean, he's the one that's done a billion gazillion interviews with people on TV uh, and if he thinks that's the way he should do it then he knows far better than me putting words in his mouth yeah. you know um, so I think that that came across surprisingly well really and uh, his kind of Barnsley skepticism really yeah. added to the whole uh, setup I mean really the skepticism and the smugness of the setup is really important it's about the smugness of science coming to and thinking that they can uh, open Pandora's box and be immune from what they unleash because science knows everything. Uh, And even though, you know, we don't kind of say that, but the very kind of smug, slightly jokey Halloween night approach at the beginning, I think creates a feeling in the audience, I hope, um, especially now probably in retrospect, this is not going to end well, you know. It yeah. never does for people that are so dismissive of uh, ancient forces, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so there's kind of a feeling that we're smug, kind of know-it-alls, we can, you know, we can do this, but little do they know, you know. So hopefully that makes the story work, I think. You know, it absolutely does. And something as well, and don't worry, I'm not going to get into politics, because this show's not at all about politics, but I think it's very relevant today as well in the whole sort of era of fake news, as they say, this idea that TV can lie to you, you know, because I think a lot of people trusted those people that were on TV and it was almost like, well, it must be real. Well, the funny thing is when I was writing it, I wasn't thinking of politicians. I it didn't, it, you know, it was beyond contemplation to think politicians would outright lie to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that I think they thought they could all be trusted necessarily, but, yeah. but in today's context, I didn't, I didn't imagine we would get to the position where we are t- today, whereby you can't believe anything. Um, I mean, back then, it was more about the fact that the convention of documentary and drama was all kind of blurring together. So you had dramas shot like documentaries, and you had uh, document- documentary or reality TV shows like Rescue 999, which had actors in them recreating scenes that had really happened. So yes. the language of documentary, the language of uh, drama was becoming in the, the delineation between them was becoming very blurred and insecure. Uh, so that's why it was uh, of that time did we want to do it really. And, um, uh, and I, you know, 
I guess I was thinking that you know when an expert appears on TV, I was thinking in those days you have a caption that comes up and it says Doctor Professor So and So of wherever university, and you know being you know being a writer, you think well, what if they're not? <laughs> you know, you take so many things on trust that this doctor knows what they're talking about. You listen to the latest research from scientists, you know, that's announced on the TV that this is bad for you, that's bad for you, this is good for you, or this correlation between this and that. And uh, I'm just very skeptical about all those things. What scientists? I mean, what scientists? Who are they? Is it just a, you know, stab in the dark? Is it? Does it actually mean anything, or is it just a story? Um, so those th those things don't go away, and they definitely were were present, uh, you know, back when we made Ghost Watch. But um, I did I didn't think that that we'd reach a stage where the general rhetoric of television would be so much about do I believe what I'm watching or looking at looking at and hearing? Um, <laughs> you know, um, I, there seems to be a a complete lack of faith in being given facts in um, current affairs at the moment. Yeah. It seems awash with opinion and um, spokespeople who have a hidden agenda. So you, so the actual truth of any situation seems to be completely buried under under obfuscation and and. Uh, Dark arts, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think that's scarier than even Ghost Watch was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, but yeah, I mean, the beauty of it was that given the time that it came out, nineteen ninety-two. I mean, as I said earlier on about with the internet and everything, you know, it was the last time that 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 could have been done. You know, because after that, we suddenly dropped into this incredible sort of information age, and you know, but it was just it was the last great kind of. You know, it couldn't be done today. Basically, there, there, you know, well, there would be the um, as as when they did the uh, inside number nine Halloween last year, which was uh, which was great fun and had you know lots of n nods in a way to Ghost Watch, um, you know, deliberately so on 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 their part, um, and I thought it was fantastic. But uh, you know, they built in Twitter responses. You know, they built in the idea that people would be tweeting about this as soon as they were watching it. And of course, if we did Ghost Watch today, that's what they would be doing. But yeah. I don't think, you know, I don't think you could conceive of it in the same way today. There's not the same television doesn't operate the same way. There's streaming. There's uh, cable, and um, you know, there's uh, it's just a different climate completely. And I think uh, if some, you know, it's up to someone else to do the next kind of Ghost Watch, the new new. War of the Worlds, and it'll be something that it'll be something that you and I don't see coming, and that's yeah. the whole point, you know. It's the next thing will be. Um, well, actually, maybe it's not even a thing. Maybe it's just happened, and it's everything. Yeah. <laughs> so there's no point in having a thing because it's it's ubiquitous. It's all around us. So yeah, that ghost has got in the machine, so to speak, and it's it's there to to stay in a way. Um, and the novel, a bit like I Am Legend, the great uh, book by Richard Matheson, where uh, the world is dominated by vampires and there's only one human left. Uh, maybe we've got television where nothing can be trusted and the aberration would be actually something that's true. That would be unusual. <laughs> well, listen, Stephen, I know that you, uh, you have to wrap up here now. Um, but I just want, no matter what the future holds for shows like this, uh, as far as I'm concerned, after... Um, the War of the Worlds, you, your show absolutely captured it and did it best and whoever comes next is going to have an awful hard time topping it. All right. Thank you very much. It's great to talk to you. <laughs> and you happy, as well. happy Halloween as well. And you as well. And don't be, look, whatever you do, don't be terrifying people this year. Yeah, that's right. Don't have nightmares. <laughs> Stephen, listen, thank you very much, sir. Take care and uh, whatever you have in the future, we'll be watching with, with, uh, with great interest. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Take care.